Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on using the sine rule to find obtuse angles in a non-right angle triangle. Now hopefully you've seen the previous video where we used the sine rule to find an unknown angle in a non-right angle triangle. And if you haven't seen that video yet or you don't understand that method, please watch that first because otherwise it's not going to make much sense. Now we want to find the unknown angle again, but this time we want to find an obtuse angle. Now the method's the same, it's just there's something extra we're going to have to do at the end. And the ambiguity is this, like if I just draw out this triangle again, with the sides, so we've got 15, we've got this angle of 42, and we've got this side of 11, and I'm just going to do that with a dotted line for the moment, and we've got this angle of theta here, it could have been that actually the 11 was pointing this way instead, so I had the side of 11 going like this, and then our angle of theta could have been here. So if I just cross that out, believe it or not, this triangle is the same as this triangle in the sense that this length is the same as this length because I made sure that this length here is the same as that one. The 15 is the same, the 42 is the same. So these are effectively the same triangles despite the fact they're obviously different. I've managed to make these two lengths the same and the angle the same, but it's a different triangle. And that's because in this case, the angle theta is obtuse, and then I've managed to manipulate the triangle without changing any of these figures here, the 11, the 15, or 42, such that theta was now acute. Now let's just do the main method we usually do, and then we'll think about how we fix this at the end, so our acute angle then becomes an obtuse angle. So what we do is we use the sine rule, but the modified sine rule, so remember we had this flipped version of the sine rule. So sine of particular angle capital A over little a is sine of capital B over little b. So this was the sine rule, and this was the variant of the sine rule where we want to find an unknown angle. So remember, the first step, we would label the sides first. So let's label this angle capital A, and then its opposite side little a. Remember, we use lowercase letters for side lengths and capital letters for angles, and then we got b's as well. So we got capital B as this other angle involved, and then the opposite side length will be little b. So then just substitute this formula, sine of capital A, so sine of theta, this is the Greek letter theta, over little a, which was 15, is equal to sine of 42 over 11. And then we want to get theta on its own, so we need to multiply both sides by 15 to get rid of that over 15. And that gives you sine of theta is, and then remember, when we times a fraction by 15, we can put the 15 at the top. So it's 15 sine 42 over 11. And then to get rid of the sine in front of the theta, we inverse sine both sides. So inverse sine gets rid of the sine there. And then we're going to do inverse sine of this. And if we do that on our calculator, that gives us 65.846 degrees. Now, we can see that this angle is actually obtuse. So what do we do to this angle to fix it? Now, if for a moment we just think of a graph of y equals sine of x, it looks like this. You may or may not have counted this graph before, um, but this value here is 90, that value there is 180, etc. But can you see that on this graph, that if we say had sine of 30, so sine of 30 is here, that would be the same as the y value if you did sine of 150. And that's because of kind of degree of symmetry. Look, you can see that these two values have the same y value. If y is sine x, sine of 30 seems to be the same as sine of 150. And basically, when you do inverse sine and you get a solution, you can get another solution by doing 180 minus it. So we do 180 minus 65.846. So I'm going to just do 180 minus that answer. And that's going to give me another solution of 114.2 if we want it to one decimal place. So that actually is the final one. So that's not the value of theta. So in fact, I'm not going to label this as theta. I'm going to call it, I don't know, theta dash or something. Theta dash, theta dash. And then this final angle here actually is theta. Now this actually works geometrically because if we found this angle here of 65.8, because this part of the triangle here is isosceles, we've got 11 and 11, that means that this angle here is also 65.8, and then you can see that obtuse angle here, which is the one we want, this obtuse angle here is going to be 180 minus it. 